Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Sheikh Albani's reputation uh, reputation of a jihadist in a debate with an extreme jihadist the great scholar of hadith Muhammad Nasuddin Albani showed the correct understanding with regards to jihad jihadist we have no doubt that you are one of the first of the scholars in the century to call for the return of the understanding of the salaf there is no doubt that the issue of jihad is an issue of disagreement dis disagreement among those who follow the methodology of the salaf in the issue of jihad, we call the people to fight jihad under two conditions. The first is that it has to be done with pure intention of the sake of Allah, and the second is that it has to be under the ban of Islam. However, we hear from the devout Muslim, you would add a condition that, that, that they narrate from you, which, which we never heard about in hadith. Such conditions are Islamic knowledge or, or, or education or purification, and having khilafah or an Islamic state. Uh, Aina. <coughs> Uh, these, uh, these, these conditions, we hear a lot from the brothers who follow the knowledge of the Salaf. And among those who follow the Manhaj, if Allah so will, so my question is, do these conditions have any reference in the Sunnah? Or are they only in Ijtihad regarding the current situation and conditions? And before that, do you really call for these conditions? Uh, Imam Albani, first of all, we agree to discuss this issue with you to find out about your call. Jihadist, I told you about it. Imam Albani, then explain your call. Your questions are premature now. I want to understand what your call is about. Jihadist, uh, my call is clear. To perform jihad according to the conditions I mentioned, intention, because the Prophet ﷺ said, well, for, the, for the word of Allah to be, to be higher, word has fought in the way of Allah, and at the ban of Islam, because the Prophet ﷺ said, we well, fought for the sake of uh, partnership, uh, supporting one group or fighting another, and died, he died the death of Jahiliyyah. Imam Albani, fine. Do we need an, an Amir leader to perform jihad? Jihad is no. Imam Albani, so we perform jihad in a big disorganized means? No. But Imam Albani, also your first condition, which is the pure intention. This condition is, a, is, a very, is, is, is in every act of worship. So we are done with you, with it. Your second under the Islamic banner. Do you do you do you imagine jihad without an Amir? How can we have an Islamic banner without an Amir leader 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 for the banner without banner? Jihadist, we can perform jihad in the uh, jihadist. We can perform jihad in this manner, like if a Muslim goes to a disbelieving enemy leader and kills him. Imam Albani, we were talking about the jihad of a group. Jihad under Islamic banner is it is, it, is it the jihad of one person or the jihad of a group? Also, a group of Muslims that live live for jihad, do they need to add an Amir to lead them? Jihad is yes, uh, yes. Yes, of course, a group of Muslims who travel or live for jihad need an Amir. And, an, and if a group of Muslims or more, of more than three live for jihad, they need an Amir. Um, Albani, they, then why did you not mention this as a condition? Jihad is well, okay, let us make it a dead condition. Um, Albani, okay, for the, for the jihad that is obligatory on all the Muslims, do we need a group for it or can it be done as an individual? Jihad is either case. Um, Albani, this is not an answer. Uh, jihad is why is it that? Why is, it, why is, it, why is that? Imam Albani, we say that jihad is, is, is of two kinds. Fad, 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 which only a small group of Muslims can do. And if group, a if group does it, the rest of the Muslims are not questioned about it. This kind of jihad individuals can do and can do on their own. And fad, in which all the Muslims have performed in a specific area. To this kind of jihad, do we, know, do we need an Amir to lead the Muslims? Uh, Aina. Jihad is yes, we need an Amir for the group if, 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 if it fights or it, it doesn't fight. Marbani, good, we return to say Amir to mean a Khilafah leader of the Muslims. Jihad is not, not, no, not a Khilafah. Imam Albani, why is it dangerous to say a Khalifa? Jihad is yes, of course, because this means we want to reap the fruit before we plant the trees. Imam Albani, this is what I see you doing. You say you want an Amir for the group group or Muslim to lead Jihad and at the same time you don't want him to be a Khalifa. Is this what you want? Jihad, Jihad is yes, well yes. Imam Albani, okay, then where, 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 is the, where is this Amir? And who is this Amir? And, and how and can we have more than one Amir? We really, we are now on the condition we agreed on before, which is that we need an Amir. And you claim that we need an Amir to lead this group of, to Jihad without him being khila, the Khilafah. Which do we get first, and the Amir or the Jihad? This, this is like asking to, 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 to pray before the Adhan, calls prayer or after, which comes first, after some arguing. Jihad is okay, we do need an Amir for the Jihad, that is Fardul Ain, obligatory upon all the Muslims, before we start the, before we first the Jihad. Imam Albani, excellent, then do we call to have an Amir first, or do we call for Jihad uh, first? They said, well, both at the same time. Imam Albani, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah, there is no might or power except with Allah. We just agreed that we need an Amir for Jihad, before we start the Jihad. 
The next question is, do we call for an Amir first or do we call for the Jihad first? This group, uh, all kinds of groups uh, need an Amir. To call for this kind of Jihad, we do, not, we do need an Amir first. The Amir will call for the Mujahideen and send some, some here and some here and some there. Jihad is okay. What if a group of Muslims read in the Quran about Jihad and want to do Jihad? So they gather, they gather for Jihad and then appoint an Amir from, from them. Imam Albani, oh brother, what are you ascribing in a case of for jihad or for jihad or for the kifaya, which only a small group of Muslims can do? And if a group does it, the rest of the Muslims are not questioned about it. For Fardul Kifaya, it is okay for a small group to gather and perform jihad. For Fardul In, we need to uh, the whole group of Muslims. How can we have the whole group of Muslims if we don't have a unified relationship? For this kind of jihad, this, uh, this kind of Amir, I do not see any of the Mujahideen calling for it. Why do you not call for that Amir? Jihad is okay, then let us call for this Amir. Or Imam Albani, okay, then what are the characteristics for this Amir in your opinion? Jihad is some characteristics. Imam Albani, and do you see an Amir with these qualities? Jihad is yes, many. Imam Albani, where? Jihad is everywhere. Imam Albani, we say that we need an Amir for the whole group, for all the Muslims. How can we, how can we have more than one Amir for all the Muslims? Jihadist. Arguing around the issue. Imam Albani, do you know what the hadith of the Hudayfa ibn al Yaman, radiallahu anhu, says about this? Does it lead to the conclusion that this jihad needs a khilaf or otherwise? Jihadist, what does this hadith have to do with our discussion? Imam Albani, did Hudayfa not ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about what to do when there are callers to the doors of, of the hellfire? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa answered that he must stick to the Imam, leader of the group. If there is an Imam, then let him stay away from every group. Do this condition apply today? Do we, do we, do we, do we not have people who claim to be Muslim yet they are callers to the hellfire? Is the, khala, is the khilafah not missing? Jihadis, I prefer to discuss other narrations like they will never cease to be part of my nation, victorious upon the truth. They will not be harmed by whoever pulls them or lets them down. Malbani, what does this have to do with our discussion? We are not in disagreement about calling for jihad. We are in agreement that jihad is an obligation today. What we what is agree on is that we is that do we need a khilafah first or not? What you quoted odds nothing to the argument. We both agree that jihad is for the first obligatory. Do you understand what we are disagree about is the issue of needing a khilafah to start this jihad? Jihad is okay. Imam al Albani noticed that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised Hudayfa to stick with the Imam, uh, stick, to stick uh, with the Imam of the Muslims and their main group. You have to admit that all the conditions in the Hadith are true today. Jihad is true. Imam al Albani and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said if the Muslim had no Imam or group to leave all the groups, so what do you do now? A jihad is where we try to look for the group of Muslim and find an Imam for it. Imam al Albani, this is what we call for. Jihad is first, but right now it is not the it's not the time for it. We need the Imam first, and the, um, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered you to follow the uh, follow and stick with his group. Jihadist, aywa. How do we know that we cannot perform jihad until we get this khilafah that is indeed in need necessary? Imam Albani, the hadith says if the Muslim had no one leader, then leave all the groups. And we already said before that the jihad for Afardul In has to be done with the group led by a leader to all the Muslims. And an Amir, if the Muslim had no leader, they say they stay away from all the groups. How can they do group jihad if they if they should at the same time stay away from uh, all group? You are contradicting what you already agreed on. Islamically, we have only one banner, one group and one leader. We do need this group, this one group to start the Fardul In jihad. That is there, silent. Imam Albani continues, now, now what I want to do is prove to you that this Amir of the Fardul In Jihad must be a Khilafah. Allahumma sallim sallim. So the, so the teachers advises, so the teacher advises him to stay away from all groups. From all the groups. Aywa. The student is obedient to his teacher, and this teacher is following his Prophet Sallallahu What will this student do? He will go ahead living his life in a valley, looking after his sheep or whatever. Worshipping Allah ways the jihad, it is, if it were obligatory upon the Muslim to fight then, the teacher will tell him to fight and not to stay away from every group. Is there, is there, is there a jihad there? As long as there is no Imam, then there is no jihad. This evidence is clear. Jihad must be under the supervision of an Imam or a Khalifa. But let me tell you about something that troubles many of the students of knowledge, that there are many groups that uh, fight, uh, like the Afghanis or those in Syria a decade or more ago. 
Those people, if they want to fight, they must be under the leadership of one Amir. That doesn't mean the Syrians fight in Afghanistan and Afghan and Afghanistan in Syria. No, it means that both fighting groups must be under the supervision of one Imam and one Khalifa. If there were no Imam and no one group, not in the meaning of the not, not in the meaning of the two fighting groups, but in the meaning of one group in their unity of leadership, but could be more than one group of fighters, each fighting in a part of the Islamic world. Both groups will be operating on their own. To do this jihad, the obligation of the Muslims' unity and unity needs a khalifa. To, this, to establish this thing, we must start with the education and purification. We cannot start with jihad right now. We say that there are many groups of jihad, yet all these groups are in, in, in agreement and, uh, and, and as Allah said in the, in, in, in the Quran. Do not dispute with one another, let list your courage and strength reflects. Uh, we are today many like the following or following of the river. What you want to do is give licenses to these variant groups. Jihadists, okay, then how does this education and purification lead to Khalafa? Uh, Imam al bani story repeats itself. Anyway, claims that the Prophet is their, is their, is their role model. Our Prophet Sallallahu spent the first half of, of his message in making the call to Tawheed and he started with this, not with the Jihad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi first raised his companion Islamic education. He required them to say the word of truth and not be afraid of it. He also taught them that the Islam teachings. We know that our Islam today is not like it was when Allah revealed Aliyom akmaltu lakum dinakum. Today I have completed your religion. Many things have indeed been added to Islam. Do you not agree? Imam Albani, I do not deny that, uh, but oh my brother, the question is where do you start from? My call is to perform this jihad, we need an Amir. To get this Amir, we must work on the Tasfiyah, clearing the region from all falsehood. And, uh, and Tarbiyah, re re rearing the Muslim upon the pure teachings of Islam. Uh, think about this on your own, by considering the Hadith of Hudayfa, which we, do, which we do need first, jihad or the Amir. Jihadist, has anyone before called the call for Tasfiyah and Tarbiyah before Jihad? Imam Albani, may Allah be messed with you. Tell me when did the Muslims not have an unified Khalifa? Jihadist, what about the time of Ali, Ali and Muawiyah? Imam Albani, you mean you have a doubt that Ali was right and Muhammad was wrong? Uh, no. Jihadist, no. But uh, Imam Albani, no. But how many Khulafa rulers were there uh, after some discussion? Jihadist, okay, okay, one. A listener says, to be frank, my sheikh, this discussion is going nowhere. If one does not make his intention and remain pure, he will never understand. Malbani, this is indeed a good advice. We live in an age where one of these fatal characters is widespread, which is everyone liking his own opinion. Today, everybody who reads a bit of Quran or learns a bit of Islamic rulings and Hadith begins to think he's a something in knowledge. Uh, he's a something in knowledge, although he cannot read the Hadith without errors, and then he wants to argue everything he sees. Jihad is trying to interrupt. Malbani, the time for discussion is over. I will take the advice of my brother. My advice to the student of knowledge, my, my advice to the student of knowledge is not uh, preceding in preaching to the people something that they may lead them to greater misguidance. He, sh he should uh, he should check uh, he should check with the people of knowledge before he jumps to conclusion. It is one of the disasters of the Muslim youth today to quickly adopt opinions without looking into the opinions of the Salaf and Khalaf with regards to these issues. I advise Muslims to such the, to research this, especially in the issues that concern the group such as jihad. Yeah, jihad is without doubt the pride of Islam and the base of Islam, and the verses and hadith are guiding this are known to everyone. Allah willing, however, this jihad has, it, has its conditions and premises. From its basic condition is that the group uh, that fulfills it must be in agreement to return to the Quran and Sunnah in their rulings. This, in fact, needs a great time of education, purification by the scholars and uh, scholars and callers, like the band, the, like the man in which the Prophet Sallallahu educated his companions. We know that the Muhajahideen called for the Muslim to join in the fight, and when they go. For uh, when you go to fight, they find disagreement among themselves in matters of the faith and the basics of Islam. How do these people get ready to go for jihad when they are yet to understand what is written on them of creed? This is this. My brother had led us to understand that jihad is not to be discussed without discussing its premises. The first premise is, is we are, as we attest before Allah, the Khalifa, since if the leaders exist today and the bond and, and the bond I talked about, common understanding of Islam does not exist among them, then they will turn against each other and fight each other. 
They must be all for one methodology and one understanding. I therefore advise every Muslim to walk by the hadith of Hudayfa ibn Yaman. Ibn Yaman. Leave, all that old, old, leave all the giant groups and stay by yourself. And this is not to mean to live in the isolation. It means not to join a one or another group. You can do yourself and all of the Muslims good with your knowledge. This, this is a reminder and the reminder benefits uh, the believers.